Uh, so uh, the last talk for the day, then Ross, who will talk about introduction to stratified vector bundles. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, and also uh, the thousandth uh, thank you to the organizers uh, for organizing this and letting me speak. Um, so today I want to tell you about a class of objects I've been developing lately. Um, there's a called stratified vector bundles. There are a few different ways you could motivate why you might want to do this, but my personal motivation comes from uh, geometric quantization, and this is the one and only Poisson part of this talk. Um, so in a geometric quantization, uh, which you, well, at least one version of it, is you take a symplectic manifold and then two vector bundles, a polarization, one's called a polarization, one's called a line bundle, a pre-quantum line bundle, um, don't worry too much about what they are exactly, if you don't know, but they're vector bundles. Um, and then you get various constructions, which that's why I've labeled this fish as, um, like half forms or metaplectic corrections, all sorts of stuff like that. And then out from the back end comes theorems, like Sniotiski's theorem, which uh, relates Bohr-Sommerfeld leaves and uh, the dimension of the uh, quantum Hilbert space. So, um, my motivation is that there's various situations I'm interested in, like very simply like with torque manifolds where um, these things become uh, singular. So you, some variant of these become singular. Let's say they're not smooth anymore, they're not manifolds. Like you could do some kind of a singular reduction and you would not get a, a smooth selective manifold or you do some other thing like taking an interval system and the polarization is no longer smooth, and then a lot of these constructions no longer work, uh, and so you don't get the theorems anymore. Um, so not all of them, some of them go through, some of them don't. So um, what, nonetheless, in a lot of these cases, which one I'm interested in, uh, you do get some kind of partition into manifolds in some sense, and uh, I would like to kind of develop this theory of stratified vector bundles, because I think it might be a good way of getting these constructions back and then hopefully some variant of these theorems back again. Um, so that's that's at least the idea. Um, okay, but I won't have time to get into really developing the theory too much of this. Uh, all I'll have time to do is just tell you the definition and then go through uh, a few examples, I suppose. Okay, so um, first off, stratified vector bundles, they live over stratified spaces. So let me just roughly tell you what I mean by a stratified space, just real quick. Um, so this is a very rough definition, but a stratified space consists of two things. You have uh, X and sigma. So X is gonna be some regular enough topological space. Sigma is a partition uh, into C infinity manifolds. Both have to satisfy a whole bunch of regularity conditions, which I'm not writing down, uh, like locally finiteness here and like paracompact and Hausdorff and all that. Uh, but I will demand that they satisfy the frontier condition. Here, condition is a kind of cellular thing. So if I have two pieces of my partition, which are called strata, by the way. So I have two pieces, and they satisfy that if I intersect one with the closure of another one, and then I get something non-trivial, then it must have been all along that my um, piece actually lied in the closure. So as to say, the uh, boundaries of each of these pieces in the stratification, the topological boundaries, not as uh, manifolds, um, that they are just a disjoint union of other pieces. So it's a kind of yeah cellularness. Um, so just a quick example, of course, is if you have a manifold, then you could just take sigma to be the, just the manifold itself. Whoops. Uh, there you go. Uh, another one, and this is a, one of the big reasons people started studying these things in the first place due to, uh, Whitney's work on, um, uh, analytic varieties, singular analytic varieties, but, um, I won't get too much exactly how this goes, but you could consider this variety, x, y equals zero, just these coordinate planes. So um, just an example of what the stratification looks like. Um, which I'm told I'm not allowed to use colors so much. So, um, so one stratum is just gonna be the point here. And then the other strata will be, uh, well, I guess you could just take them to be the complement of the point. 
if you demand everything's connected, then you should take each one separately. And then you can see that this does indeed satisfy this uh, frontier condition here. Okay. Uh, now the main class of examples that I'm interested in uh, come from, uh, well, the uh, quotients by uh, proper groupoids, but we can just do a compact group action. So G is a compact connected Lie group. Uh, M is just the manifold and G will act on M smoothly. So we have our manifold here and then we have this quotient map to the uh, orbit space. So um, this is in general, not a smooth manifold, uh, but nonetheless, we can do this kind of partition construction here, but uh, first you partition M and then it induces one down below. Um, I'll be using this later for construction, so might as well go into it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so the idea is first, we're gonna define an equivalence relation on M and then we're gonna get a bunch of equivalence classes and then we take the connected components and that's our stratification, okay? So I'll just tell you what the um, equivalence relation is. So if I have two points at M, I'll declare they are equivalent. If uh, they're stabilizer groups, GX and GY are conjugate. So GX conjugate to GY, okay? So this defines what's called the orbit type stratification. Again, let's see past two connected components and we'll write like this. So SG of M, this is the set of all connected components of equivalence classes. Okay, very nice. Okay, so that is the stratification up above. And then so this is three continued, I guess. So now if you have one of these orbit type strata up above, then it turns out this is invariant under the G action and all the points here have uh, conjugate stabilizers. So it then follows that, um, well, so S mod G is actually a manifold and this map here, the induced quotient is a surjective submersion. Very nice. So we can just now define a new partition now of the quotient, which is called the canonical stratification, which is just the set of all um, quotients of orbit type strata. Okay, so now just a real, real uh, silly example. I mean, silly and very simple. Um, I can draw it. So just take R2 and just have S1 act on it by rotating about the origin. So uh, zero here obviously has stabilizer all of uh, S1. So that'll be one stratum and then it acts freely everywhere else. So that gives us the rest of our stratification. So, oh, it's a horrible noise. Okay. And then uh, now if we pass to the quotient, well, this is very, very simple. <laughs> so, the origin gets sent to a point, very nice. And then the rest of it gets sent to this ray here. Okay, so that's a very, very simple one, but you can do this anytime you have a compact group, compact connected lead group, you can do it more generally um, with uh, proper groupoids, but uh, I don't need to go into that. Okay. So now we have our examples of stratified spaces. This is what I want you to keep in mind because we'll be coming back to it real quick. Um, but now let me tell you what a stratified vector bundle is. It is the stupidest definition you could come up with. It is exactly what you think it should be. So, um, so what is a stratified vector bundle? So it is a map between two stratified spaces, which will satisfy one. This map here is continuous between the actual top underlying topological spaces. Um, two, if I have a stratum in the base space down here, so S lives here, and if I take its pre-image, uh, whoops, that this lies in the, this is a stratum of the total space. And I guess I'll exclude this in this one, the natural map going from line versus of S to S, I'm gonna demand that this be a C infinity vector bundle. 
Okay, so now that I have this, I now have a uh, canonical globally defined um, uh, scalar multiplication. So final thing I will do is just insist that the scalar multiplication also be continuous. Chip, not to R, to E, continuous. Very nice. Okay, so just the simplest definition I think you can come up with. Um, okay. So now, what are some examples of these? This pretty much, I think, will take me to the rest of, maybe, we'll see, I don't know. Um, okay. Okay, so the very first one is that, well, if I have a stratified space, okay, and then I can just define the trivial uh, vector bundle, and I'll give it a partition, or you just take Cartesian products of strata in X with Rn, so S will range over the strata of X, and then, of course, the projection will just be the projection onto the first factor. This is the trivial stratified vector bundle, I guess. Uh, and uh, so it turns out that this sort of extends. So if given any vector bundle, finite rank vector bundle over X, you can always go, you can always perturb the, um, uh, what are they called? The transition charts, uh, transition maps um, over each stratum in such a way that it actually does become smooth over each piece. So you can non-canonically uh, take any vector bundle and turn it into a stratified vector bundle as well. If you have some extra structures or data coming around, then you can do this for free. But in general, that's all the best you can do. Um, OK, I'm erasing all the stuff I need, but that's OK. OK. Now oh, two, how am I doing? OK. Um, all right, so now suppose, once again, we have G is a compact connected lead group, and then pi going from E to M, that this is a smooth uh, G bundle, vector bundle, okay? So yeah, vector bundle. Okay, so, now, since G is compact and connected and a Lie group, uh, it we can do what we did before, and we can get two stratified spaces, and G, and we get a map this way as well. Uh, however, this is not going to be um, a stratified vector bundle in general, uh, nor will it be, in some sense, a fiber-wise vector, a family of vector spaces, either. So, like, let's say the fiber of any point here need not be a vector space. So, it's not very vector bundly. Um, so I'll just give you a quick example, which we just did. So consider R2, so that was a vector bundle over a point, and then you have the circle acting on each one in the suitable way, and then you pass it to the quotient, and then you get this ray over a point, which is not homeomorphic to any vector space provided you um, equip it with like a Hausdorff second countable linear topology or whatnot. So uh, not a vector bundle. OK, right. So what do we do then? So the idea is that suppose I have a G representation. So B mod G is not necessarily going to be a vector space. However, it is if G acts trivially. Naturally enough, so if I replace V by the fixed point set, which is a representation, I can now take the quotient. Uh, and since G does nothing, it just gives me back VG. Very nice. OK, so this is the main idea. And this is how we're going to get a stratified vector bundle. So going back to our situation right over here. So given a point X and M, the fiber, again, we're in a smooth vector bundle setting, no, nothing stratified over there. So given this fiber right here, this is a, a GX representation. So it's a representation of the stabilizer group of X. Okay, so now I can do the same thing. EX and get, get replaced with 
uh, this fixed point set here. And correspondingly, E will then get replaced by what I'm calling E tilde, which is just the union of all these fixed point sets. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, uh, what am I doing? Okay. So now, uh, I guess I'm not really afraid of this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I did not phrase it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. So suppose I have a orbit type stratum. So the first thing is that um, if I take E tilde and restrict it to S in the suitable way, so I just take only my points in S and I consider it as a natural map over S, this is a G bundle. This is closer to the G action and it forms a nice equivariant uh, vector bundle. And the quotient descends. So this also is a C infinity vector bundle. Okay. All right. So this gives you kind of the desired result. So, um, so I guess in two parts. So one E tilde over M with the partition. Just take the union of all these E tilde is restricted to each S. This is a stratified vector bundle. Okay. Uh, and then I guess I must continue over there. Okay, and then of course, what the other thing you think should happen, which is E tilde mod G over M mod G is also a stratified vector bundle. Whoop. With the partition that you think it should have. This is just the union of these restricted parts. Okay. Excellent. Are there any questions up to this point? Ah. Yep. Yeah, so this, yeah, definitely. So I'll, I'll give you a, just one example. So just, <laughs> I'm only doing the circle acting on R2 for all my examples today. Um, but yeah, so let's have the circle act on R2. And then our vector bundle now is gonna be tangent bundle. So uh, if I do, I guess, the tangent bundle R2 tilde at zero, then this is just, uh, just zero. And then if I do the tangent bundle at any other point, I just get back the tangent space once again, where X is not zero, right? And why is this? Because the stabilizer at zero is all of S1. So the only thing that's fixed by all of S1 is zero. And then, for any other point, well, it acts freely, so it does the full rank thing. So yeah, E tilde is almost certainly not a vector bundle in general. However, it is if G acts freely uh, or if G acts trivially. Those are two cases where you do actually get uh, a nice vector bundle, in both cases. Okay. Now, I don't know. Okay, I got five minutes. So let's see if I can do the last one. It'll be four. Okay. So last one is the, what the, is a, well, this is due to Plum, um, which is the stratified tangent bundle. So basically the idea is that if you have a stratified space, you can very naturally define its um, tangent bundle like that. You just take the union of uh, the tangent spaces of each of the strata. They're all smooth manifolds. Of course, this does not have a natural topology, so you have to give it a topology. Um, this is just set theoretic. So the idea of how you go about doing that is that you equip it with a, a sub-Cartesian structure. So you have a family of local embeddings of X into various Euclidean spaces. 
as I say, so this is only defined locally, each of these embeddings. Uh, and yeah, this n can also change from point to point. And then, so you give it this family of embeddings, and you equip it with some suitable um, compatibility thing. And this gives you what's called a, a, a smooth stratified structure. Structure. OK. So now that you have this, these local embeddings, you can at least set theoretically very easily differentiate. And then this gives you a family of local embeddings into TRN. And then you give it the weakest topology so that each of these is continuous and so that the uh, quotient map from TX to X is uh, uh, also continuous, okay? Once you have that, then, uh, well, you don't quite have a stratified vector bundle. You have to impose some other further condition. Uh, so I guess that's beautiful ohm. You didn't phrase it this way. Um, but yeah, if you impose some other condition called the Whitney A condition, so if X Whitney A, and this implies TX over X is a stratified vector bundle. Okay. Okay, and importantly, these spaces that we were just considering, these quotients by uh, compact group actions, these are canonically Whitney A. So they also have a stratified tangent bundle. Okay, so now looking at that thing I just did right here, you may wonder, do they give me the same answer? And the answer is no, they do not. They are different. <laughs> so uh, you can see that. So this, so so when I went through my construction here, I got something that was rank zero at zero. So you can think if I go to the quotient here, this thing is rank zero at this point here, and then it's rank two everywhere else. Okay. So if I uh, okay, race here, I guess. So then, well, you can see right away then that R2 on S1. So if I go at the equivalence class of zero, this is zero once again. But if I go the equivalence class of anywhere else, I get one. Okay, so they're not the same. Uh, sorry, well, dimension. Okay, so they are not the same, uh, but they can be united through a variant of this construction that you can do for more general things called VB groupoids. Um, three minutes, extremely cool. All right. Um, which I don't have the time to go through the whole thing. So I'll just show you kind of how this works um, in this particular case, how to unite these. Um, so the idea is that, um, right, what you do, is you first consider, so we got, again, G acting on M. Uh, so we're gonna consider new of MG. So this is just gonna be the union of all normal spaces, of the orbits. Okay, this is most definitely not a vector bundle and also, well, not a lot of cases, it's not a vector bundle and it's not even a stratified vector bundle either, um, so. Whoopsies. But nonetheless, we can do a very similar thing. GX does act on each of these as a linear representation. So we can do a very similar construction. We'll get a kind of new tilde where we consider these fixed point sets. Okay. And now I can pass to the quotient. I get new tilde mod G, which makes sense. This is a stratified vector bundle, and at least there exists a continuous bijection, which is a uh, isomorphism we restrict the strata to P M mod G. Um, I need to know more about the local structure of these things, some kind of Schwarz's theorem, I think, in order to maybe conclude there's an inverse, um, but at least it's a continuous bijection, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, and I guess I'll just uh, call her there. So thank you very much.
Um, thank you, Eden, for this great book. Uh, are there any questions in the audience? I, I thought you you were telling us this is a VP group, right? Huh? Yeah. So, um, so I have I have a more general construction uh, that you can apply to a VB groupoid. Um, so the first one I gave you was applied to the VB groupoid um, TM to TM over M, and then what should go here? G, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that one, and then the second one was applied to T of this. Uh, and then same thing. Uh, ah, yeah. you 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 have you begin with the VP group part, which is totally smooth, and uh, end up with yeah. uh, something yeah. stratified. Yeah, very stratified. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. so so I also wonder, like, how this sec and uh, like uh, this V tilde does it have yeah. topology, or it's only up. Uh, yeah, so if you pick a like a G invariant um, metric or something like that, then you can yeah you can give this a subspace topology. You can give new or V here a subspace topology, and then this inherits the subspace topology from there, kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you. No, I have a question, but uh, I, I must confess I just saw the answer in your paper. Okay. No, but. Uh... <laughs> But I will ask anyway, because related with what Daniel was telling us about this uh, characterization of vector bundles by multiplication by scalars. Yeah. So do you manage to, to do this with a... Yeah, yeah, sure. So bundles. yeah, there's the... Um, you, you want me to talk about it right now? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, so there's a nice characterization of a vector bundle by its uh, scalar multiplication. So if you have a you have some space and then it's being acted on by... R, the monoid R, uh, in a nice way, then it turns out that, so I don't know, let's give this a name actually. So mu going from E cross R to E, so that's satisfy some kind of, uh, I'm not too sure what the name, regular regularity condition or something like that. Um, so it turns out, so if it satisfies this condition, then if you take the zero section, or the where zero gets sent, uh, wait, sorry, let's say this again. So E over, everything that's been multiplied by zero. This is a vector bundle and mu is its scalar multiplication. So you can very easily come up with a stratified version of all this stuff. And then it turns out that, yeah, you get the exact same uh, theorem back, um, but now just for stratified vector bundles. So that's another justification, I think, for that. this is the okay notion, hopefully. Yep. So, um... Uh, maybe I am very tired because it has been a long day. Yeah, but... fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you were sta you were sta starting to say something about VB groupoids, but then you didn't. I, I guess you didn't finish. Or no. did you finish? There is a, a stratification associated with the VB groupoid. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, there an assumption on the VB groupoid? Uh, the assumption is that the base is proper. Okay. Yeah. And and can you describe vaguely what is the result? Was the, oh um that you can it gets. Basically, yeah, there's a Morita invariant way of going from VB groupoids to stratified vector bundles over the quotient spaces, as long as the base is um, proper. Yeah. I don't. It uses the orbit type stratification of the proper groupoid yeah, on the yeah, base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba basically, it relies on the fact that, yeah, proper groupoid looks like this locally, and then you're good, good to go. Um, there is also an infinitesimal orbit type stratification. Does it make a difference? Uh, I have not checked that. No, I, I've only um, yeah, use use this. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Doesn't seem to be anything on them. Oh, there is there is one. More. How strongly do you need smoothness hypotheses for this work? How strongly do you need smoothness hypotheses? Uh uh hmm. I'm not too sure, honestly. I haven't looked beyond the the, the smooth world, I guess. Yeah. All right. If there are no further questions, let us thank Eden again.